The first thing you'll need to do is get your student scores out of Performance Plus. Go to the District Portal, go to IMS, double click Performance Plus. Inside Performance Plus, you'll want to go to the lower left hand corner to find your test results. Go into Performance Tracker and click Assessment Scores. Then use the drop down filters to find your test information. Be sure when selecting the series to select Post Test. Once the filters are set, click Run Report. When the report is finished, your data will appear on the screen in a format like this. To extract the student post-test data, look all the way across the sheet to the right-hand side of the screen, and you'll notice a small Excel icon. Double-click this icon to export your data in an Excel spreadsheet. When the spreadsheet is ready, you'll see a link pop up. Double-click this link. Click Save on the pop-up you'll get a second pop-up, letting you know that the download is complete. Go ahead and click Open. You might get an additional pop-up asking if the source is trusted. If so, go ahead and click Yes. It's a good idea to save a copy of these scores for your personal records. Let's do that now. I'm going to save it as L. Holer, Measure B, Post Test 2018. So I've got a copy of my students' post test scores. The next step is to record this information on the roster verification spreadsheet that I completed last fall. You should have uploaded a copy of that spreadsheet in DSC as evidence of fall 2017 roster verification. The district video that walked educators through the process also encouraged you to save a personal copy of the spreadsheet as well. I saved mine in a folder called Double Secret Probation Vault with other important documents. Once you see it, I'm sure you'll remember completing it last fall. The next step is to record students' post test data in this spreadsheet. But first, there are a few very important items to bring to your attention. First, when DOE calculated and reported the typical growth values by quadrant, they didn't round, and instead reported targets containing fractional values such as 12.7, 19.1, 4.2. So we have to make an adjustment to correct for the lack of rounding in DOE's growth targets. By adding a single point to each score, we will correct for the fractional points in the growth target. This step will ensure that no teacher is penalized due to a lack of rounding. Second, remember that your roster has changed over the course of the year. Some students have left and some have been added since you created this fall 2017 roster. For that reason, it's not a simple cut and paste of data. We'll need to go through it student by student. So I've got both spreadsheets open on my desktop. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to the post test spreadsheet. And I'm gonna take care of adding one to each of the raw score values. So right behind the first student's raw score, I'm going to put my cursor in the box and I'm going to type equals that I'm going to click the cell that that number value is in and say add one and push enter. Excel automatically adds one. I'm going to go back up to that cell, click it. Notice the box that appears in the corner. I'm going to grab that and left mouse click and drag it all the way down for all my students. When I let up at the end, Excel automatically adds one to each value for each student. 
Just so I don't get confused, I'm going to go up and I'm going to hide column B and column C. I'm going to left click at the top on B, drag it over C, you see both columns highlight. I'm going to let up with my left mouse and click down with my right, and then I'm going to select hide. Notice those columns are still there. They're just hidden. It goes from A right to D. But now I can easily see that Nathan is a 15, Haley is an 18, Tony is an 18, and so on. Make it a little easier to see visually as I start to enter these numbers. I'm going to put a border around all of the cells. So I'm going to click in the cell with Nathan's name. I'm going to drag it across to his score. Slide it all the way down for all students. I'm going to let up. I'm going to go up here to Excel and I'm going to select a border and I'm going to say put in all the borders. And now it's even a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to click Save. I'm now ready to jump over to the fall roster verification sheet that we did. You see that it's opened. It's got three tabs to it. It's open to the pretest tab that we already filled out in the fall. In a minute, we're going to be filling out information on the post test tab. But notice the information from the pretest tab has already populated over into the post test. The same thing is true when we click the verified roster. So that'll save you from having to duplicate information across the three tabs. So let's start by going back to the pretest tab. We need to copy this quadrant growth value chart. And it's very easy to do. I'm going to put our cursor in the cell that says quadrant. I'm going to left click, hold it down, drag across. That's you see those cells highlight and then drag it down. I'm going to let up and I'm going to right click and select copy. I'm going to now go to the middle tab where it says post test. And I want to put it right here in this square paste. So we're now ready to add the students post test scores and post test quartiles onto the data sheet. Remember, we only want to add scores for those students whose names are listed. If students transferred in after the time that we gave the pretest, a good example would be Terrence Bradshaw. You'll see that he has a post test score of 13, but Terrence wasn't here in the fall. We just won't enter any data in for him. Or if we had students who transferred out mid-year, like Michelle Carter, you can see she took the pretest, but Michelle does not have a post-test, then we'll just leave her information blank. So it's as simple as Nathan Anderson was a 15 as a post-test. We're going to put 15 in as his post-test score. And we can see a 15 is in the fourth quartile. We put those two pieces of information in. The algorithm looks to see, did he make his spring target? The answer was yes. Or it looks to say, did he start in the fourth quartile and end in the fourth quartile? And if the answer to that is yes, then it's target met as well. Haley was an 18 as a post-test. You can see that she fell short of her spring target of 19.1. She did end in the fourth quartile, but it's a no. She needed to hit that spring target. Tony was an 18 as a post-test. Fourth quartile. And he's a yes, because his spring target was an 18, 17.8, and he got an 18. Kayla, on the other hand, had an incredible spring target of 33.6, not even that many points on the test. Her post-test score was a 19. Let's put that in. Her quartile value for 19 is a 4, and it's a meets the target. Why? 
Yes, she missed her spring target. However, Kayla was one of those students who started in the fourth quartile and ended in the fourth quartile. Students started in the fourth and ended in the fourth regardless of whether they met their spring target or not. We give credit as target met. You'll continue to add scores all the way in. Remember, for students without a score, like Michelle Carter, just leave them blank. Don't put any zeros in or anything else. Just leave them blank. I've now entered all my post-test data for every student who was with me to take the pretest in the beginning of the year. Notice I have three students who actually transferred out during the course of the school year, so no post-test data exists for them. Those cells were left blank. So in the fall, I had a total of 42 students who took the pretest. I have scores for 39 of those 42 students. We're now ready to verify the roster. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of my spreadsheet, to the Verified Roster tab, and click it. Notice all the information that we entered on the previous tab has been transferred over. This will make our job a whole lot easier. I'm going to first take care of those three students who transferred out. Michelle Carter. Notice she's in row 18. I'm going to highlight that entire row by left-clicking it, then right-clicking it, and selecting Clear Contents. Notice her name disappears. I still have 39 students. Still calculates the number of students who are meeting the target. Let's do the same thing for the other two students. Connor Dwyer. Clear the contents. And then finally, Kim Road. Clear contents. Still 39 students. However, there are two other students who did not meet the 85% attendance rule that need to be excluded from this roster. Amy Kazad. So I'm going to highlight her, right click, and clear contents. Notice my total students on verified roster just changed from 39 to 38. And the other student was Christian Taylor. So I'm going to page down. There's Christian. I'm going to highlight that row, right click, clear contents. After removing him, we should see that student count dip down to 37, and it did. So of the 37 students on my verified roster, 27 students met their target, which comes in at 73% of my students meeting their targets. I'm going to push save, and this is the form that you will upload as your roster verification in DSC for Measure B. And finally, double check the numbers and the calculations. We have found that if information was incorrectly entered on the post-test tab and then erased or deleted, the spreadsheet holds on to that information in the background and can affect the calculation on the roster verification sheet. So please count up the number of students, verify that, number of students that met their target, then divide and come up with a percentage of students meeting the targets. If it agrees, sign with your evaluator on the sheet. If not, make note of that right on the sheet, sign it, and have your evaluator sign it.